boy, what's my motherfucking name? Coming to you live from the city that don't play no game. It's waiting on the hurdy. Fuck your trials and your tribulations. Ain't nothing gon' change. We reach the hurdy. I know you've been deliberating on this for so long. You know the hurdy. I bring you the hurdy. And here goes the C-E-R-D-I-C-T. My voice comes off as irritating to me. Maybe. To, to some. You know what I'm saying? To some? Yeah, but if they not if you know, if they not looking at the you know, the the depth, you understand, of of how you've evolved. I mean, well, you know, a lot of people don't. Yeah, I'm about to say you guys don't know. A lot of people wasn't there. Yeah, wasn't people there. Wasn't, that's why. That's crazy. why. I, that's why I put that up there. Because we got what you about to say. We just put that up there. I think you put that up there because I put that up there. What? They wasn't there. I really feel like you did that. I may have posted on Instagram. I like did. They wasn't there, I bro. did, but they wasn't there. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like nobody. But you did post it because I posted. But I was saying that in the sense that you weren't there either. You was you was posting that I was okay, and and a lot of people won't understand what you just did, but I understand exactly what you just did. Like I get it. Like I wasn't there. Like I wasn't who I am now then. So I wasn't even there. I got you, bro. I've been like I've been studying you a long time, my good brother. Yeah. You came out slick a slickster. <laughs> <laughs> you wasn't there, bro. No, I was. Um, physically, I was. Talentedly, I just used that on on Shaw show the other day, and I'm talented. Right. You know, talentedly, and I had the potential, and mentally. That's true. That's true. Mentally, that's very much so true. I actually wanted to begin with not more so our beginning, but like kind of bring me into your beginning, and like what you're saying, you don't have to go too much in debt. You feel what I'm saying? But just like a story that always stick out with me is like how you say how you got into the music or how your love for music came from how you and many will sit on the couch and you know be rocking and you know what I'm saying listening to different music so yeah I, I, I gotta if you will you don't even know this I almost didn't make today okay because uh, something that transpired today I've been going through quite a bit with my grandmother and um, she's the GOAT, you know what I mean? So, uh, you know, I don't wanna turn this into something else, but just without her, my mama would have been. Never would have been my godmama, which is a lady that's right there on that level with my mom, probably even more so, you know what I'm saying? Because she's the one that really showed me how to love because uh, my mom was a young mom. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, she was great as well. But, you know, when you're young and you're dealing with so, so, so much, uh, a lot of that balance that's necessary mm -hmm. may not be there. But through my grandmother and, um, you know, through what they instilled in her, you know, obviously it's gotten to where it is now. Mm -hmm. But early on, it was tough. You know what I'm saying? But my but my grandma just dropped her off at receiving. Um, it's been a struggle. It's been a struggle with it, but uh, I'm celebrating. Because uh, without her, it wouldn't have been no us. But, and, that's, uh, and that's deep. And that's, that's, that's definitely deep. That's definitely a story that I didn't know. Yeah. That I didn't know. Yeah. So, uh, I'm just appreciative. I'm celebrating Ida E. Cuff because uh, she saved us. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of what I've learned, uh, be it uh, not just uh, the best that I am, but even 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 some of the parts of me that's not to be desired you know what I'm saying I've 
you know, I've learned uh, from her. And um, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for my grandmother, Ida Cuff. Mm -hmm. at, so, any, at any point in time, you can put your phone on library. You know <laughs> Just whooped me, didn't he? He just whooped me. <laughs> whooped me. At any point in time. But then, it's like, so just like I said, for me knowing you, I know that one of your first true loves was a game of football. Right. Like, you really, you really love football. Right. And so, tell me, like, like how did you get into football? Uh, I elaborated on Jackie Tuckle. Uh -huh. That's my, that, that was, that was my godmother. Okay. And uh, like I said, I, I, you know, she taught me what I say, how to love. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, so, in short, I think, Q, you went to Martin Luther King, didn't you? That's high school in the city. Right, 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 right. <coughs> so, Jackie Tuggle, my godmother, mm -hmm. she was a worker. You know, she worked at Chrysler. But Chrysler also employed a fella by the name of Ed Davis Sr. Okay. So if you know anything about King football, you know that I want to say that Ed Davis Jr. graduated in 1990. He was a running back at King. He went to Michigan. Okay. But by them being employees together at King High School, they introduced, um, um, I was over my godmother's house and they showed up there. Him and a couple of his buddies showed up to my godmother's house. And just seeing me being a chunky, thick kid that I was, they said pretty much that I was ready. I was ready to play. You know, they believed I was ready to play. At the time, uh, it was the Eastside Colts. Okay. So uh, they registered me up for the Eastside Colts, and that was history. Mm -hmm. So I be, so 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 from there, uh, that's where my love started Nigga for football. I think play. I was I think I was 13 years old, and I started off on the 18th. And then you went on to play for Osborne. Went on to play for Osborne. Okay. Went on from there to play at a prep school, Milford Academy in Connecticut. In Connecticut. Yeah, on, I'm with you. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, from there, uh, obviously, I didn't at that time make the most of that. Mm -hmm. But uh, obviously, from uh, the coaching that I got from the Eastside Colts, mm -hmm. and then over to Osborne High School, and then at Milford Academy, you know, I felt like I could, I could, I could, I could teach the game. Okay. So at Milford Academy, when did like what made you like what? Why did you stop playing there? Uh. Probably just not, you know, uh, you know, football is a tough game. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, uh, you know, it'll beat you up not only physically, but it'll beat you up mentally as well. You gotta True. really, really be a hundred percent engaged. You know what I'm saying mm -hmm. in that game. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, you might, uh, you know, take an injury, which, which I did to mm -hmm. my shoulder and also a concussion, you know what I'm saying? But I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think that that's just what it was. I just think that between not being focused mm -hmm. and uh, wanting to get back to what I had already subjected myself to, right. I came back home. Okay. So once you came back home, was that around the time where you start seeing that bro was kind of doing his thing with the, in the pal or? Well, I'd already uh, been pretty much coaching him. So mm -hmm. when I left to Connecticut, he was already somewhat on his path in pal as a, as a, as a C teamer, as a B teamer. Saints, right? Saints, mm -hmm. making a name for himself. He was already, you know, bro was already that's another way that I knew that I could, I could coach, mm -hmm. somewhat, mm -hmm. because he would always be running around our practices, and then from there, on the side of the house playing ball. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And I'm teaching them, you know, this, that, or the other. And more than anything, at that time, him watching us over at the coach, and then him obviously up at the Saints. 
you could see guys just, you know, getting the ball in the end zone, doing their thing. He, uh, you know, he wanted that. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you know, the lime is something that he ain't gonna let get too oh, far, that's that's get too far away from him. So he running that ball, and um, and um, I left. But when I came back, he didn't actually have the greatest of year when I was away. Mm. But then again, he had moved up. He he had moved up to the B team from the C team. On the C team, he had the newspapers. See now, this is what else. That's what I was gonna bring it to because all the while when y'all was doing that, I was just a young kid. You know, I used to be into sports myself, and um, every day my mom used to drop the newspaper off at my door. You know, I mean, I used to read the sports section, and that's always a name that I used to read. Like when I look at uh, Detroit high school football, really, I'll always see his name in there. Wow. Yeah, so I kind of knew. I kind of knew of him before I even knew him. Really? Yeah. So he goes on to be, we will both agree, a star high school football player. Definitely. Definitely. Um, Definitely. You, if if not just a star, but a legend. A legend. Okay. Then he goes off to college. We can we can run through that. It didn't work. I say that for his for his when we me and him kick it. But um, something interesting happened. So let's fast forward up. Oh uh, five, was it oh five? No, I'm saying let's just fast forward to oh five. Okay. Um, you come back and what do you do when you here? Once you get back to Detroit, well, when you come back to Detroit, you begin coaching. Facts. Okay, so run me through there. Uh, when I was out of town in California, mm -hmm. I, you know, I knew that I wanted to coach. Okay. So. I, from there, went up to Osborne High School, and interestingly enough, uh, my middle school teacher, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Dixon, um, he was at Osborne, okay. which I knew, but I went to him and told him that I wanted to pursue coaching, mm -hmm. and um, he granted me that, he granted me that, so I coached, uh, that was... <coughs> 205. Trying to get to all your accolades. I know. <laughs> I know. I want you to tell the people what happened. So, uh, I think since, what was it? it although it was on the JV level, mm -hmm. but I think uh, it was no championship associated with Osmond football from 1986 or 87. I'm aware. <laughs> uh, which obviously, you know, they beat King at King in 1987. Oh, okay. But fast forward. That was for you, Q. Yeah, that was, <laughs> that, 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 that was for Q. Uh, 19, like you said, I mean, well, not 19, but 205. I assumed uh, assistant coach of the junior, I mean, of the of the varsity and head coach of the junior varsity. So mm -hmm. you know that year. We put in a little work, hard work, and it culminated in us being city champions. City champions. City that's, champions. that's what I want the people to know. For sure. So, we about to get into this. I just want the people to know that you are a winner in everything you do. All right? And that's very important to this story. So, 2006, I'm going to say around August, something interesting happens in my life. Um, so I'm just this, uh, I wouldn't say shy, but just a kid that stays to herself, you know. Um, I began running like with my older brother and his friends. And, um, I began to make a little noise myself in my neighborhood for being, you know, one of the best rappers or whatever. And, um, all the shades and came out. There we go. You feel invisible? Anyways, um, <laughs> um, uh, E-Class, uh, you know E-Class, he, uh, he was running around my neighborhood with like this camera and I, um, he asked me to rap on this camera or whatever. This was before 06, this might have been like 04, but that's when I began to get my name wrong, 04, I was about 15. And um, fast forward two years later, E-Class come back and they all in front of my mama house and um, you just really wanted to like that, huh? <laughs> 
do your so, thing, bro. No, no, no. We, we, you doing your thing. I'm gonna do my thing. Yeah, we talking about you right now. We all, we, you know, we all in front of my mama house, and um, they bring me outside. They all like <coughs> rapping or trying to rap or whatever they doing, or I don't know what they was doing because I went out there. But they say, I want you to come spit something, right? And um, it was me, bro, Slim, and I want to say Trigger. Trigger was out there rapping. Trigger rap. They asked me to rap. Trigger rap again. They asked me to rap. You get what I'm saying? So now it's, it's turned to like like a little cipher battle. Don't take too much you can't handle, bro. Uh, <laughs> so now it became like this little cipher bro, battle you leave thing. Me alone. I'm, I'm with you. I'm right here with you. You're telling, I'm, you I'm, telling I'm, greatness I'm telling, right now. Yeah, yeah I'm telling, telling greatness. greatness. So Yo, do you? And you know, Trigger. You know, that's my that's my guy. You feel what I'm saying? I actually believe it or not, I don't know if you know, I actually used to like look up to Trigger rapping wise, like his style. I used to I used to try to, to write some of my shit to sound like Trigger a little bit. Y'all fucked with Trigger. But long story short, um Bro makes a phone call. Right? You happen to be on the receiving end of this phone call. You pull up. What happened? From your side of the story, because you already know you already know my story. What happens? You pull up, I'll never forget, you pull up in a green car. Man. Parked across the street from my mama's house. Okay. I don't remember all that, but. Oh, no, no, it's good. We're going to get there. I walk. Bro say, it's my brother, Paulie. I say, what's up? Bro's always good at this type of yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he say, this, he, he tried to make it seem like he'd been talking to you about me, right? So he say, he tells you, this is what I've been talking about. This little V, right? V spit some. I spit my rap. That raps ends. I didn't get no response or no reaction. I was always taught. Go again. I go again, spit my next rap. No reaction. But it was it, it wasn't like it was a not it wasn't weak, you feel what I'm saying? It was just like you was just like, okay, you feel what I'm saying? So then I go into my bag, spit that rap. You get a phone call, you walk away. You get in the car, you pull off. Wow. I didn't heard this story a couple times. <laughs> but again, I it, you know, it wasn't that you wasn't dope. Because undoubtedly, you for, couldn't convince me I wasn't dope. No, nah, well, no, he was dope, bro. For the age that you were, it was pretty dope. But on a side note, you know, I had already been, I had already uh, been indoctrinated to some legends of Detroit rap. Okay. You know what I mean? Big Herc, you know what I mean? Okay. Uh, Shout out Herc. Yeah. Uh, We're going to get there. Yeah. Some legends. Uh, <laughs> uh, Ishan. Okay. You know what I mean? Shout out Ishan. Yeah. So. It wasn't just that, but then just on top of that, I think that y'all may have caught me at a bad time in bro. the middle. You could have just said it was a bad time. I was getting to a dollar, or I had a dollar. I definitely, I definitely was getting to a dollar. All that is fine. That I day. definitely because that's all I wanted. If you heard the phone call, <laughs> I was moving around. But if you'd have heard that rap, you get what I'm saying? No, but, I, but 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 no, but, I heard but, it. No, no, it's good. It's great. Now. This is like I said, this is like August of 06. So now I'm going into my senior year, high school, right? Keep. Listen, that was the beginning. Me and you really didn't, we didn't meet back up until when? I'm gonna ask you if you remember before I tell you, cause I do. You don't remember, okay? No, but I do remember, but I don't remember. It was the studio session for Deuce Dubbin. Do you remember? Yes, I do. Okay. So first, I definitely it wasn't it was it wasn't about me. It was class and trigger. That's who you was. That's who definitely. That's who you you know. That's definitely. where that's what the focus was. That's I'm not gonna say that's what you was into. It. That's what the focus was. You get what I'm saying? And at 17, I didn't know, but I did know how to play the background. You get what I'm saying? But I didn't. So no, long story didn't. short, no, no, but I did. But I understood. You did, but you didn't. I, under, I right. understood. No, you right. Keep going. Now. So we do deuce dubbing, and the next day, we shooting a video for it, all right? Do you remember what happened this day? Yes. So we shooting a video for deuce dubbing. This is how I knew you had a couple of hours. 
You went. <laughs> you went out. I, I promise you, it had to be like fifteen niggas there. You went out and bought fifteen people white Air Force Ones, right? It came down. You asked me what size you wear. What did I tell you? I'm good. I'm good. I don't need you to buy me nothing. You paid for the session last night. You feel what I'm saying? I buy my own shoes. You get what I'm saying? Granted. You still end up buying them because you was just persistent with it. Like, you're not going to be the only person. Because I think I had some whack-ass Helly Hansons or some shit. I'm sure they was Helly Hansons. Yeah, yeah, it was some whack-ass Helly Hansons. I you think like, they were. So, you know, they, they they convinced me that uniform. You feel what I'm saying? Everybody had to be there in white Air Force Ones. You're going to be in the video. You can't be the only person that's standing out in some whack-ass shoes and everybody got on ones. You feel what I'm saying? So, we end up doing a video. Um, And then, we fast-forward some more. I remember being at my sister house on college and I get a call at one o'clock in the morning. All right? This is this this will be the session I feel like that changed everything for us in so many ways. Like it changed the whole path of, of everything. And I'm and I'll be feeling like sometimes I sit back and think like what if I didn't even answer that call? Like what if I was just on some bullshit? You get what I'm saying? It just didn't answer. Matter of fact, I'm gonna rewind just a little bit. I'm gonna run just a little bit. The night before my graduation. I remember that. Do you remember us being we, in the we, studio? We at the studio. Till like seven o'clock in the morning. We was at the studio. And I had to be at graduation at nine. I remember that. And I think I think I was thinking about it earlier because, like I said, I wanted to write some notes, but I'm like, we got too much history. I can just. I, can I remember. Miss. You feel I remember what I'm that well. But we in the studio the night before my graduation, and I want to say I, we cut like four or five songs that night. And it was just like I feel like that was the moment where you realize, just you can you can correct me if I'm wrong. I feel like that was the moment when you realize this kid is hungry. You know I, what I'm saying? I agree. Like this 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 kid wanted. I agree. Like, just couldn't. I still remember like I, I damn remember that, can remember the beats in that, that we sitting in a chair and it, it was chairs in mm -hmm, the back corner. Mm -hmm. I remember that well. And you had to walk out the hallway, slide the door open to go in the studio. But yeah, I just feel like that was the night. Like this kid will sit in the studio until seven o'clock in the morning on the night before was supposed to be the biggest day of his life up until you know his seventeen year life at at this point. So, of course, you didn't make it to the graduation. No, I didn't. Yeah, it was cool. You was just tired. Right. <laughs> I had to say that some, uh, you know what? I'm not. I'm. I'm not gonna say that. Oh, and it's there. crazy because when we did college ain't for everybody. It, that skit kind of reminded me. Well, when I hit you with uh, uh, just got done graduating. You, you like, <laughs> so you already know where I was going. You already know where I was going with right, that. Right. 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 Um, Marino. Uh -huh. Yeah, it was kind of sure. tough on a brother that night. Okay. Okay. So um, now let's fast forward to this phone call. I get a phone call at one o'clock in the morning. I'll never forget. I'm in the basement. We watching Sports Center. It's me, my brother, um, another one of my sister's friends. We just sitting here watching sports. I get a call. It's you. You say, we up here at the studio right now with Herc. Can you get here? I didn't have a car at the time. I didn't have a way. You get what I'm saying? You, I, I don't remember that. I don't, I don't, yeah. You didn't tell me all that information. Yeah, I didn't have, I didn't have a way, but I told you I could get there, right? Because, like I said, that's how hung, that's how hungry I was. I might be in the studio with her. I got to get this. You feel what I'm saying? And that's remember that that used to be my that used to be my my uh what's the my competitive spirit. Like Herc about to be in the studio. I got to get this. All right. To be young again, boy, I tell you. Um. So I asked. My sister friend, I'm like, listen, I ain't got no money on me. You much better now, though. You know that, don't you? I'm better now than I was then. Yeah. For sure. For sure. I I'm smart at this moment. I lived more. Yeah. Okay. Go on. So I asked my uh, my sister friend. I said, listen, I don't have no money on me. All I know is my manager just called and said, Big Herc at the studio. I have to get there. I don't. You don't have to. You can just drop me off. I will find a way home. I didn't give a fuck at that point if I had to sleep at the studio. They didn't have Ubers and Lyfts. I would have waited for that motherfucker. Cause remember we used to we used to uh, catch the I mean we used to go to the studio at Eight Mile at Eight Mile by uh, at the Dream Factory right by Eastland. Exactly. I would have waited till seven o'clock in the morning when that grass shit bus started running before I missed out on this opportunity. You get what I'm saying? So um, I get up there. I never forget. 
We doing stand it. They doing the stand it. Um, what song? What sample was that? Just here go your credits right here, cause I'm sure you came up with the beat. Bad times. Bad times. Bye. I remember. He doesn't remember, ladies and gentlemen. Bad times. Bad times. But I can't stand it. Yeah. You can't stand so, it. We got hurt. Detroit classic. Go on. We got hurt. Go on. They, well, it's, it's, they was going by 220. It was, at the time, it was Bliss and J.E. J.E. always been J.E. Who made that record, bro? Who made the song? Stand it. I ain't hip. Always knew Bad Times, too. You don't know who made Bad Times? Uh-uh. Me neither. But classic, though. Go well, on. listen. So, um, so 220, uh, J.E. and Bliss. I'm going to call him class, not saying. He, he class, you mm -hmm. feel what I'm saying? So they there, hurt there. They all writing the record or whatever. Shout out to DJ Detroit Red. Uh-huh. Um, that was my liaison to Big Hurt. Go so on. they in there, they doing a the record. Now, you might have told me before I even, like before I even came in the room, cause you met me at the door. You might have told me that I wasn't going on the song, which was like a real heartbreaker from the start, but I didn't let it show. You get what I'm saying? You might have told me like you, and this is one thing. Wow. I definitely appreciate you for, and and this is like. Wow. You taught me to appreciate the moment, understand the moment, because you're you're going to get here. You understand what I'm saying? You're not going on this song tonight. I didn't call you up here to think you're going to be on this song. I called you up here to understand the moment. You know what I'm saying? Like I got you at 17 year old, at 17 years old, with one of the biggest artists in Detroit history, if not the biggest. Appreciate the moment. So, me being 17, I wasn't listening to that shit. I'm getting on this record. You get what I'm saying? So, I go in there. And they all in the, in the sound room. They writing. Herc ain't writing at this time. He just sitting back chilling. The beat playing. Got you. Da 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 da. Da, 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 da. Right? I tell class, bro, please put me on this song. Fuck what Paulie just told me. Put me on this song, bro. It's my it's my at 17 years old, I'm thinking it's my time. <laughs> it's my time, right? So Paul class, I think class, you know how you just gotta fly and you just shooting some shit off like alright, you can get on the song, B. Not thinking that. I'm writing like this. You feel what I'm saying? You can even ask Crawford like, I write pretty fast, and that that's something that I always done. When I'm when I'm in the moment, true. I write fast as hell. True. You get what I'm saying? So, and that's something that stuck with me to this day. But long story short, the back then verses was 16s. I wrote a 24. That's how hungry I was. I'm gonna outshine everybody on this record. That was my mindset. Not understanding the moment. Like Big Bro just told me 20 minutes ago. Understand, like, appreciate this moment. Fuck this moment. I'm gonna get another moment. You get what I'm saying? So, so now, so now Herc, um, Herc began, he went into the room where the piano was at. And he began, this one, I, you know, he was isolated himself to write his verse. So I leave out where they at, with my verse already being done. I sneak in there right behind her. So now I'm just sitting there watching. You get what I'm saying? Because like I said, I've always been a student of this shit. I always wanted to be the best. Even when I first started rapping. Like the first rapper I studied was Rakim. Because my daddy told me that's who the best rapper was. All right, of, all, so of all that we've been through, that what you're talking about right there is what pretty made is pretty is what pretty much made it Captain Rap. Easily bearable. Okay, check me up. So, my daddy told me Rakim was the best rapper. So I'm gonna study Rakim. Dad, can you give me all your Rakim CDs? I'm gonna study that, right? So, now we got the best rapper in Detroit history, right? I wanna be the best. I'm right here with the best. I can give him a five if I want to. You get what I'm saying? I'm gonna just sit here and chill. But me being 17, over anxious, I'm talking to him. Yeah, it's like, you know, so like, how you get into rap? How you such and such? How'd you get in? He just told me, like, listen, young dog, I'm going to give you all the game in the world. Let me work. I'm here to work. And at that point, I understood. I got it right there. He here to work. And did his verse. Went in there. 
laid the shit out that verse. You feel what I'm saying? You remember that verse? Of course. Fire. Of course. Fire. But he laid his verse. I go in there to lay my verse, right? They like, come on, V, just we're gonna put you at the end of the song, bro. Come on. My dumb ass get in there and do that 24. That shit didn't even make it to the bounce, bro. They like, bro, what is you doing? Like, what are you doing? You ain't even come up with a cool, like, see, me now understands that that's your chance to do the Wayne on Back That Ass Up. After you back it up, just do something cool and get the fuck out the way. Right. Let Juvenile and Manny Fresh do their thing. You you gonna have your time, young man. <laughs> Move out the way. You get what I'm saying? But I go in here. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah, we ain't we ain't going with that V. And I think I think you and Bruno kinda knew I was crushed. I think but 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 wait, 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 wait. Hurt, true to his word, when he about to go, he said, Young dog, let me holler at you. I remember that. And he pulled me to the side and he had we had he gave me the advice of my career, bro. Be patient, be loyal, and have something to talk about. 17 years old, I was taught that. Patience, loyalty, and content. Right? Right. So then, y'all give y'all give me a ride home. I didn't say nothing the whole ride home, bro. Like I feel like y'all, and then you didn't make it no better by playing this shit, bro. <coughs> Like, we just playing it over and over, and I'm just sitting there thinking, like, damn, this is the furthest I ever, to, the longest it ever took me to get home, bro. I want to get home. Right. You get what I'm saying? But, I get out the car. You have one of those long-winded ass talks. Wow. And, yeah, yeah. And you say, I got you. I got you. Because I feel like, at that point, I, maybe it's just me. I feel like you was hurt for me. Cause I feel like you know I didn't understand the moment, but you know how bad I wanted it. Definitely. Right? Definitely. So you on point. So we get out the car. I'm about to fuck you up with this one. The date of standing was June 24, 2007, bro. Wow. I had a fucking blank CD with the date on there. And it's always been in my memory of the day that changed my life, bro. Uh, you never knew that? No. Okay. So, we going? I will say this since, th I mean, this is the perfect for me to, you know, intercept in there a little bit. Mm -hmm. I don't keep counting. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't be you if you didn't come with some slick shit. I don't keep counting. Listen. Go on. I'm going to always remember where I was at, what time it was, and why I was there. You understand? So. I'm going to steal from you. Go ahead. You my man. So, about two or three weeks passed, right? And this is another day that changed our history for life. This, now, if the hurt, if the hurt, sit, or if that phone call put us on path, this day set us for life. To where we damn near, if the, with that song, ever catch, and it still has time to catch. If that song ever catch, that day will make us rich for life. What day is that? Not the date, because I know you don't know the date, but what happened this day? Over on Everson Street. Okay. Which is my other grandma's street. Uh-huh. Uncle Jimmy's mom, right? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. I was over to No Sarge. Shout out to No Sarge. Over to No Sarge in the studio. You gotta make your story sweet like mine, cause I got my story is fire. But I want to hear from yours. It's it's simple enough. Okay. To me. Okay. I had. Be detailed. Yeah, no, but I'm story. saying no. I had in mind on that day that mm -hmm. we left the studio up at the Dream Factory. Mm -hmm. I had in mind, just like you said, that I kind of felt bad for you, mm. but uh, thanks for a minute. You know, yeah, I had something in my back pocket. Okay, already mm -hmm. same way that I came up with the bad time sample. Mm -hmm. I had another sample in mind, and that sample, I believe, you was like, I said something in 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 uh, Dream about you being like 
all these hits gonna fuck around and turn Paulie the puffin. Uh, yeah, Paulie the puffin. I meant that shit. You was you you was doing samples back then for sure. Like you know, the sampling is like a, a hip hop thing. You feel what I'm saying? But it's just like you pick two two classic samples, my good brother. I give you that one. Early on. Early on. First. Very early on. Standing might have been like your first your first one. Like your first. You just came into the game with standing, and and I really, I'm really, I really feel some type of way that didn't catch on for them. All right. But you know it is what it is. But go ahead, finish telling well, the story about me again. <laughs> <laughs> again, you have to chronologically know where you at. Mm -hmm. You got to always know where you at. It's a lot of people that put in tremendous work. Mm -hmm. And you know the annals of Detroit hip hop you know what I mean mm -hmm. and even where we were at when we first started it's still technically considered early on in comparison to where hip hop in Detroit is right now right I mean we hot hot as fuck right now you know what I mean they don't and they don't even understand where like when I get around these the younger kids it's just like y'all got it so much better than me and Paulie had it when we first started because number one, we didn't pretty much we you knew who you knew and where you would you know what I'm saying? But it's just like we didn't know nobody. We didn't have nobody. And that was pretty much the first I would probably say the first six, seven years of our career. Right. Like we had people that used us. Wow. Misused us. Because you always told me there's nothing wrong with using. Just when you get to misusing, when it becomes bad. But you got to get back to this day because this is an important day, my good brother. Let me tell you where I was at. Me and my girlfriend at the time, she was picking me up to take me to work. Foot? Nope, 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 nope. Wow. Red neon. I don't know. Okay. Red, red neon. Okay, I got red you. Red neon. Got yep. You. So. Wow. <clears throat> you was. <laughs> That's fucked up. You, yeah, it's fucked up that we people talk probably looking like dope terminology yeah. in the studio. You know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? People, people don't understand <laughs> like most of uh, you know our people that we know nicknames. We we they go by nicknames of something that they probably done did. You get what I'm saying? Foot right. is crazy. <laughs> Foot is crazy. But uh, like I said, Red Neon, she picked me up. I'm going to work. You call me. You say where? What you doing? I say I'm on my way to work. You say stop at No Sage House. I got something for you over there. Right. Right? I knew who No Sage was. Didn't know what was going on, but I knew you weren't about to leave no money and nothing with No Sage, so let me go see what, what he talking about. Did you go to work that day? I, yeah, fuck yeah. Wow. So watch me. Ironically, this is July 24th, so it's a whole month after standing. Damn, bro. Now watch You're me. Much better than me on dates. I knew them dates, those was important dates. And you know, once you, once you got a computer, it, it show you the fucking date modified and shit like that. So I always seen, I got that date in my head. Don't ask me about no more of the dates. I know them two. Gotcha. Them the two dates that changed my life. You get what I'm saying? But um, you say, go over to No Sage House. I got something for you over there. I tell her like, okay, pull up over here. We go to No Sage Basements. It's flies and shit. Everything is, it's the environment. It's, you know, it's, it's Sage House. You feel what I'm saying? It's beautiful. So, sorry, say, what's up? I say, what's up? Paulie say, you got something for me over here. He didn't say another word. Play. I said, okay. You feel what I'm saying? Red Neon going crazy at this point. Like she, 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 she liked the original song. You feel what I'm saying? Really? I didn't know that. So yeah, yeah. So she get the dancing and shit. I'm like, okay, we got some. All right, give me that on the CD. I gotta go to work. You feel what I'm saying? I gotta go to work. By the time I get home, she brings, she picked me up. I get home, put the CD in my seat, my um, computer. I'm listening to it. Now all that work, I'm thinking about it, but I don't know what I'm about to write about. You get what I'm saying? I'm just thinking about it. I know I can't disappoint. Another thing Herc told me, it, and I thought back to what Herc told me, have something to talk about, right? So that's why I approached it in a story form. Nobody tells stories right now. You get what I'm saying? Let me tell us, let me, let me, and then by that time we was doing shows with class and all them, so we had the good life and all that other good shit, you get what I'm saying? So, um, I make up a story, first person I call, I call you, come over, you pull up with class, 
I'll never forget. Y'all came. Class with me. Yep, you had class with you. Y'all came to my room. Press play. Do, 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 do. Well, now I'm alone in my room. You feel what I'm saying? Y'all say, okay. Then I get to the end. The bitch had me set up. Y'all just like, I never forget. Y'all niggas went crazy. And I'm like, it's okay. You get like to me it was always okay because I didn't have a hook. Remember I wore only one masterful of hooks then. I didn't didn't have a hook for it. So I just had a straight story. I don't know what we about to do with this. I had three verses, because that's what we was doing back then, of a story. But I didn't have a hook. Alright? So we 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 had our trial and error. Uh, <laughs> Do tell it, tell it. Do, do you, you want to tell, 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 tell it? I'm going to tell it. Do you remember who the first person, not not dog, do you remember the first person we had in mind for the hook? The first person we had in mind? The female. I know. Okay. Tierra Marie. Tierra Marie. Mm. That was the first person we had in mind for the hook. Whatever happened, it didn't happen. Then, me and you, I ain't going to say we didn't fall out. I never, I never labeled it as a fallout. We had a disconnection. <laughs> <laughs> to where whatever happened, which you can explain, whatever happened, happened. We didn't talk. Honestly, bro, for about a year. I don't think it was that long. I'm trying to tell you, bro. Cause well, we went and got we went and got all rise from FedEx. I can tell you short. I can tell you for real what it was. The bag got away from me. But go on. I wanted you to tell you your story. I didn't. I mean, I know what happened. Yeah. But I mean, it's just a short, short but, and sweet. But in old V fashion, I kept rolling. <laughs> then what did I do? You went and hollered at a good, at some good, you know, at some good people. He was very good people. His okay. name was Chip. Okay. Yeah, Chip. He put Chip on the record. I put Chip on the was record. Was it a year though, bro? I don't believe it was a we, year, but we, it could we, have been. It was. We got back rocking at 09. I can believe it. We got back rocking at 09. Do you remember how that? Do I remember how what? How we got back rocking again? I don't. We had a long conversation on the phone, I remember that. On the phone, but then And I felt and I and I believe my nineteen year old or eighteen year old self told you that I feel like you let me down or some shit like that. Something along those lines. Yeah, yeah but then also I think one of them times that we got back to the studio or whatnot, we pulled over on the side. I want to say it was. And, um. <laughs> I wish you thought I was going to forget that. What we talk about? Because you might be going, you might be going, you might be speeding. Where are we going? I think that's when you basically said, hey, if we're going to do this, bro, let's do it. I mean, I'm, I do I, remember yeah. that talk. Yeah. I do remember that talk. Yeah. Yeah, because, you know, obviously you was hungry before the end. We had to break up. I mean, not the breakup, but the separation uh -huh. or whatnot. Then from there, you you know you. Shout out to Chip too, man. That's my guy. Chip, Chip good people. Yeah. Good people. But, but good yeah. people. Good. Good people. But I think that you might have had a couple overtures. You know what I'm saying? Or maybe one particular overture that we're talking about. We won't get into who it was. You um. Yeah, let's not talk about that. Um, <laughs> but you know, shout, I mean, out, shout out to Dog too. Yeah, I just don't know where he had in life. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. For me to just be speaking on him, ain't no doubt about it. You get I, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But but you had a couple overtures, and he was on point. He would have had a tremendous artist. Uh -huh. <laughs> he would have had a tremendous artist, but fortunately, my loyalty lied somewhere else. All you right. know? And All right. Okay. Yeah. My um my loyalty lied somewhere else. But long story short, we get back rocking. In 09. Now all while while we wasn't rocking, I was working on a mixtape. I start working, I just start doing my own thing. You feel what I'm saying? And um I, that's where that's where the return of the ugly be, officially began in 08. I started doing like uh records then. Uh dog would take me to the studio every Sunday, let me record up there. And that's where I began. But like fast forward 09. How did Okay, so Herc introduced you to somebody, another key important part to our story. Right. Elaborate. Uh, he introduced me, I, you know, at that time it was a burgeoning Detroit artist. Uh, at the time he was doing tremendously well. I thought that he would be perfect for uh, just, um, the choosing record. 
And at that time, that artist was none other than Dwelle. Fresh off of Flash and Lights and a Grammy with Common, correct? Correct. Also... Grammy nomination with... with also, Common. if you will, he uh, uh, was uh, had national notoriety, of course, because of that, but also sponsor sponsorships with the McDonald's commercial, this, that, the other. Right. I thought that he would be perfect. So I told him, I, don't know, I, I actually got on verdict that day. I said, I don't know what you're doing with Chip. That's my man. That's your man. That Chip, that, was, dope, that wasn't going nowhere, was it? No, it never, he, he, you know. Shout out my, to Chip. That's shout out dog. to Chip, I love him, but not for that record. Not for that record. Not right? for that record, so. Did Herc, you almost drop the ball? Definitely. Okay. Definitely, you wasn't gonna make me a loser on that song because you was, you 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 came through. Uh -huh. You know you, you know you came through with that record. I knew from the minute that I heard it that that was a winner. All right, so before we get to choosing with Dwale, we gonna go back to the conversation that you said we had, where and I said if we gonna do this, let's do it. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. We had another conversation when I was. When I was uh, when I was with Mindy, around the corner. I don't remember, but bring me up. Around the corner from my, from my crib. No, mm -hmm. I, I remember Mindy. Okay, so we had a conversation on the phone, and I said, and it, and it kind of went back to if we gonna do this, let's do it. Let's start a label. Do you remember that? Definitely. Then we start going back and forth with names, and I said, I think it should be beneficial music. Facts. Okay, and. That, that's that's how the beneficial shit started. Facts. Um. So then we go. So Herc introduced you to Tim Maynard. Yeah. Tim Maynard brings you Dwale. You get Dwale on the record. Facts. Dwale does choosing. He sends it back to us. We at the shop. Right. We listen to the record. You like it. I like it. It's good. We let No Sage hear it. Do you remember what No Sage told us? Said it was a hit. If I'm correct. He said it was a hit, but he also told us Facts. with us being with us being green and all this other shit, man. Send no ad libs. Shit. There ain't no ad libs Facts. on there. Ain't no runs. None of that shit. Send that shit back. Facts. So shout out to No Size for that. We send it back to uh to Dwelle with with the with the you know with the notes. He sent it back. Now it's a hit. See it. Now we riding around in the vet, going crazy like we got one. You remember that? Facts. Okay. So I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to get there. Even if I, I I hate to go this far into it, but even with as 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 uh, dope as he was of a producer. Wait wait wait, we getting there. Okay, we, go on. we getting go on, go on. there. We getting there. Okay, so now we back to we back we back in connection. We back clicking. We got a hit. Okay, we need more records. Saj giving us all the records we could. We had home. Saj did evolution. Saj did. Uh, what else did Saj do? He did, post. He did post, right? So, it comes a night, June 09. Don't ask me how I know that. I don't know the date, but I know the month. June of 09, right? We had, where are we at? We trying to get, because remember I told you FedEx did all rise. But FedEx gave us the files to all rise on a floppy disk, because he did it off his MP. Exactly. Right? 09, for some reason, nobody in the city had a fucking MP with the floppy disk no more. Exactly. Class comes and tells us, I know somebody. He gets him on the phone. We goes out to Livonia. We meet another important key in our story. Who did we meet? The Whitmore. Okay. Formerly of Sick Notes. Mm -hmm. Formerly of Sick Notes, but at that particular time, was was the notes okay and something go i don't think he was radio go yet he wasn't radio go yet but, radio go but, yet. but it was but it, it shows was, you that i'm in tune with what? yeah yeah it was the notes it right. was the notes so this is june 09 um we go there we spent like four hours tracking that fucking beat bro like the whole studio session with us trying to track that beat it's not like we had well, um, what was the producer name? Sash? No. No, FedEx. FedEx. It's, not, FedEx it's not like we had him on speed dial. Right. So right. this speaks also to the genius of wit. Facts. Facts. He was able to go and I don't know if it was a stem or what or, or whatever it was, 
But he was able to go in there and get and get. <laughs> Fuck and, all that. How do we talk about that nigga? Put that nigga shit together. <laughs> Fly out. <laughs> Fuck all that. He put yeah. that. He put that nigga shit together. Right. He put. So which what song was that? It was all rise. It was all rise. It the was title rise. track to it was all the title rise. track to the, to the first album we supposed to be we was working on. Right. Long story short, we played we 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 build a good rapport with we playing him all our shit. He say you dope. But your the beats, is, the beats is trash. Well, he had to make some money. Too. <laughs> he had to make some money. You he know what the beats ain't like, did. Yeah, but but uh, but he was right. Wit I guess went, he was right. Wit went and figured all them all them beats out, my good brother. Yeah. He figured all them beats out. So I'm saying that to say this: Who would you credit our sound to? Wit for perfecting our sound, or Asaj for giving us a sound? Me being me. Because we already agreed before. Me we, being me, I would say that it's all hurting it. It's all necessary. It's all necessary. Okay. But but for for where wit was gonna go with you, mm -hmm. wit. Wit. And we both agreed that wit was like a, a key contributor to it in developing me as artist. Facts. Okay. So now, shout out to wit. Shout out wit. So that's that. So now I don't know what you and Wit talking about, but it comes to it comes down to this show, a Batian show. Rest in peace, Batian. Rest in peace. All right. All right. We performed there. Right. What was the conversation with Wit after that? I don't remember. V ain't ready. Facts. V ain't ready. And I feel. I mean, I, from, I remember from a now, little brother standpoint, when, when I feel like that, that kind of motivated you but it kind of crushed you and I'm gonna tell you why because you needed me to be something that I wasn't that night you get what I'm saying with, you needed me to come at the show yeah you needed me to come and steal the show right you get what I'm saying I just didn't have it that night right you feel what I'm saying I remember and, and unfortunately that was the first time we'd ever seen me perform so they say you know the first time first impression is everything you get what I'm saying? You can do all this in the I studio. I don't know how many performances that you had up until that point. It wasn't much. It wasn't many. It wasn't much. And I've always been the 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 opening yeah. of, you feel what I'm saying? Like, class and trigger, give me a song. I remember Wit vividly to. telling me you wasn't ready. It wasn't ready. Right. And that, again, I feel like. I'm going to go back to this again. <clears throat> I don't keep count. Okay. I'm counting. I'm going to keep calling for us. Go ahead. So when you say, bro, what's the score? I got you. Just pass me the ball. I got you. But, <clears throat> so you can take it from there. From your, from your, you know. Because that's like, what was that? I want to, that was around, was, is that 10? Is that August of 10? Or is that 09? I don't know. Oh, man, we got internet in here. Somebody fact check it. When did Bob 10 pass away? I don't know. Is it 09 or 10? But I mean, but I, you know, I say this to say when I don't keep count, I just mean that I'm in it, win, lose, or draw. You taught me that. Yeah. That's that's one thing that you you definitely taught me. Well, yeah, I'm in it, win, lose, or draw, and that's why I roll with my people. Win, lose, or draw. I don't give a fuck what nobody on the outside saying. Y'all been doing this, y'all been doing that. I'm rolling with my people. You get what I'm saying? I'm a win with my mans. I'm a lose with my mans. Right. But we ain't lose a draw. We're going to be we going back on that bus together and figuring it out. You feel what I'm saying? We'll be back next season. But you stuck with me for sure because that, that, that performance just wasn't it. And I feel like that kind of set us back for some years. I don't think so. We didn't do shit from then. And I mean, we, we was building. But you got to think, if this was 2009, 2010, Eastside High didn't come out in 2014. That set us back, bro. I don't know. But, I, you know, I never looked at it as... You wasn't you wasn't keeping count. Right. But when I say that I wasn't keeping count, I just mean that I know for a fact that even though uh, that performance... We never stopped in the studio. Oh, for sure. 
We never stopped in the studio. But we're going to keep building. Yeah. We're going to keep so building. That's, so, so that's that's when I say that. That might be why I'm like a studio rat now. Yeah. Like, I'm just... N never. I'll figure it out in here. This so, is my home. So, just like I said, again, as, as advanced as you are in music, you know what I mean? I like to think that musically, because of my sister, uh, and, you know, coming up, born in the in the in the middle 70s that music is just engraved in me you know what i'm saying it's just engraved you know what i'm saying so but i just you know what i'm saying i i felt like that as long as we keep you developing mm -hmm. <laughs> as long as we keep you developing we can pick up no matter what even right now as long as you developing, you know what I'm saying, there's somewhere that we can pick up, whether it's writing, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, or, you know, if, it, if, it's, if it's for whatever reason not at the time being accepted, you know what I'm saying, as far as the sound out of here, mm. we have something, we, we have legs to stand on. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean, and that's 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 just that's just how I saw you know that's just how I saw it. Do you remember? Do you remember the makings of Isaiah? Like because I feel like it was it was a it was a key time, but it's like a blur to me. Not a blur as in I don't know what happened. It was just like a blur as in it was just like we got the city, which was my first song with Herc. I finally got a chance to get a song with Herc. Mm -hmm. Um, I wish I can get more into you know to, but I gotta you know we gotta get to this. Um, so do you like remember like the making of it? Cause I remember we went to Atlanta to shoot uh, the finesse movie. All right. We got a beat from Zaytoven. Right. Which turned out. Yeah, I re I re I re I remember Issa how vividly from one from one standpoint is that you felt like you wanted to put some out. I want it and. That's exactly what Isaiah High was. Right. It's dope as because a lot of people like Isaiah High. Yeah. But to me, it was just me not being patient. I just wanted to put something out. Because here we are, been rocking since 07, and it's 2014, and I don't have no physical, like, no nothing physical to show that I'm here. It's just like. From that perspective. I'm, verdict is word of mouth at this point. Yeah. From that perspective, when you say that you wanted to put something out. And how that time frame from 09 up to 14 set us back. I can agree with that from that perspective. But I had to add in that we stayed in the studio. We did. The whole so time. So we had, we had, and okay, so from my honest standpoint, could you see me at that point growing impatient? Definitely. Do you ever recall me saying that? I don't have that much left in me. Do you ever recall a, a, a conversation of that magnitude? I think so. That's kind of where I was at East High. This is like, not that I'm looking forward to going and being nowhere else. You get what I'm saying? Because like I said, win, lose, or draw, you instill that we, gonna, we, we doing this together. You feel what I'm saying? But it's just like, I feel like that's when our conversations of, bro, I ain't got that much in me. No more. Yeah, because by, by the time College and for Everybody came around, you had checked out. That's a fact. We're going to get there. College ain't for everybody. The making of College ain't for everybody, which I feel is definitely our peak. That was my prime. You get what I'm saying? I feel like I just listened to it before I even got here, actually. that What does what does College ain't for everybody mean to you? Because I, I recall you, like, you know, having a few tears at the at the release party about that album. Yeah. About that time. You know, obviously, I didn't, you know, I can't really put my finger on exactly how I felt, but I felt. For sure. You know what I'm saying? I felt. Um, I just felt like that all of the years that we had put in, we was, you know, uh, right at the threshold. You know what I mean? We was we was we was we was right there of do or die. You know what I mean? That's exactly how I felt. Right. I felt like this album 
It's either gonna make me or it's gonna break me. At but, this point, but I, that was only from you. That's where I was at with right, it in my right, life. Right. You get what I'm saying? We're not gonna talk about you know the fact that at this point I got three five year olds. Or you get what I'm saying? Like like life is getting real. I'm not the same seventeen year old kid right. that that you met Facts. on on College Street. You Facts. feel what I'm saying? I'm a I'm a what I would I would like to believe I'm a grown ass man no, with a wasn't. job, a crib, a car, and three kids that call me daddy. I gotta figure something out. This ain't this ain't. You feel what I'm saying? So it's just like life, and it's just like looking back on it. I wish. I wish my big brother could have grabbed me and just explained, like, we, because you have your children. You feel what I'm saying? You've lived like you've been 25 with children. Right. You get what I'm saying? And I just felt like, I felt like it was a disconnect because at this point, we not listening to each other. You get what I'm saying? Like, I'm giving you ideas. You already got your own ideas. And it's just like, it's kind of like a, 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 a business relationship with your brother can kind of be like a relationship with your girl in the sense of it's just like it was fun when we started staying at the studio all night all this other shit but it's just like bro i got responsibilities not and this shit ain't paying the bills bro right you feel something has to shake and that's what college ain't for everybody was as much as i, put, I feel like i put everything into that album you get what i'm saying like for starting from and then you got to understand my brother just passed away yeah so it's just like life is just hitting me that, that's how we came up with feelings right. do you remember the first song we did for like i mean uh but college ain't for everybody. The first song. The first song. You wasn't. I don't even think you was there when I recorded. I recorded it with Brown. It was um everyday people. Yeah, I remember. And that's when I first made mention to my brother passing away. Because remember before college ain't for everybody, we was working on hard body. And the return of the ugly too. You get what I'm saying? We was gonna fuse those, but. But me being big brother, <clears throat> me being big bro, I couldn't do it because you was a grown man. But I wanted to chastise you so bad. <laughs> I swear, bro, I did. Elaborate. <laughs> because long ago, people think that it's money. It's not that. It's not. It's, it's not money. It's passion. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So you understood I was losing passion as well. Definitely. Okay. But definitely, but the same way that as an artist, when you are in your zone and you in your bag, it's euphoric. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Me as a producer, executive producer, it becomes euphoric. Right. I had no euphoria in me, my good brother. No, you, you, you definitely. Uh, I can me name many tracks on there that you was. Oh no, 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 no. Okay, okay. So from that standpoint, sure, definitely. sure, sure. I mean, now, I can, I can go to naming. You know, dope fiend. You know, you know what? Dope fiend. Dope fiend. I was euphoric on dope fiend. Feelings. I think I was most euphoric Everyday on living people. in the city. Living if, in the city. If people really want to know how I felt at that time, no. listen to living in the city. Yeah, that's but, but what I, that's what, my exact. What I'm trying feeling. to say is that you was you was in your bag. Yeah, I was. I, I put. I, I really put my all talent wise right. and, and mentally. But that album. when I say euphoric as an executive producer, I mean passion. I mean uh, money, which leads to what you know, whatever cost that it incurred with wit, any producer, uh, different DJs coming in, it's, that other, it's beyond cost. It doesn't have anything, whereas a person think that it's about money, it's not about money. It's about passion. It's about passion. That is why with artists, whether it's bro, whether it's anybody that you understand is gonna dawn beneficial music, it's about are they built for it right because i'm knowing what you went through right. i'm knowing what i went through so if they don't understand i can't deal right i've 
it's it's so to bring to bring everything. Not saying not not saying that I can't understand that if a if a kid is 17 years old like verdict or 18 years verdict shout out Turk right or even if it's bro you know what I'm saying that that's a big difference between those two but if you don't really understand what goes into this then you know what I'm saying I, I can't really you know what I'm saying because it's just it's a tough deal and and again we're talking about we're talking about timeline because there's no guarantee mm -hmm. there's no guarantee in this shit that's a fact even right now as dope as you are and i like to think that you're one of the best in the world you know what i'm saying me i really do that it's no guarantee it's no guarantee it's something that you just dropped something that you just dropped the other day you understand with Will, mm -hmm. Dub Dollars, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Dub Dub. Fire. But for whatever reason, you know what I mean? Whether it's, you know what I'm saying? I would like to think that it has something to do with locally. Right. You know what I mean? But, and you know, there's there's so many other layers to this. Mm -hmm. Layers that, that you, that you got to peel back, peel back, peel back, peel back. Where do you start at? Some people want to start peeling back one, two, three layers, and then they are ready to to take to take off. But it don't. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way, you know. So for me, just like I said, it's about passion. I have to have a start. Mm -hmm. And the start is for me. What it was then was I have to have something that is competitive with the best so who's to say who's to say when does that best when does that best start that's always been one of my like one of my things that bothered that me that best didn't that start that best that best didn't start that best didn't start for you and I would like to say for me as well and to Eastside and I can I can't agree with that but this always been something hindsight is always 2020 you taught me that as well i feel like i wish we i'm gonna say we instead of you because we was a team i wish we could have placed me around people that were better than me Be, let me tell you what you asked a lot there no no what just <laughs> thank you my uh, looking at it from now everybody and that's no knock to nobody you get what I'm saying? Everybody that I felt I've been around, but prior to Eastside High, anybody that I've been around, I was light years better. You get what I'm saying? And it was a trip that we took to such and such house out in Cali in 16. Do you remember that? When we got um, the I Like and, you know? Yeah. Okay. I felt like that was my chance to show so I, you, I mean, is there is, is there a reason why you didn't want to say that? I don't speaking on nobody names for real. Got you. You get what I'm saying? Got you. Go on. Um, but that was a time where you hella funny because I just thought about what we talked about in the car. You hella funny. I closed the door on that, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So yeah, it was a time where um, I feel like I could have. That was that was me being able to express. You funny. Like, I could show my, my real skills. Like, I never had nobody to compare to, and I wasn't even talking about that. We dog. ain't gonna go too far, but we almost didn't make this interview. That's hella funny. But that would have been me being not, you know, that would have been me showing my immaturity as opposed to my maturity. Before. Long story short, I definitely just wanted to, I wanted to be around people that I could learn from and grow you get what I'm saying? Like, to, like, to build my talent. Like, well, how you, did you you're feel never about gonna, this particular you, artist? Did you feel like he was, that he was one of those artists that was? At the time, sure. Okay. At the time, sure. It was something new for me. He had a different way of recording. You get what I'm saying? And long story short, but you got to think, that was 16. Who got a lighter? And I wanted, I wanted to get this out. Uh... As much as college ain't for everybody was a make or break for me, 
for the first time in my career, I felt, I, I felt, um, I felt a feeling like this may not happen. And I'm gonna tell you why. Everything start failing for us. And when I say everything, I'm gonna mean this. Who was supposed to go on Dream? Rakim. Rakim was supposed to go on Dream. Right. It didn't happen. For whatever reason, it didn't happen. Right. You get what I'm saying? We was right there with him. Who was supposed to go on Feelings? Dej Love. For whatever reason, it didn't happen. So now it's just like, damn. We, nor we normally win at everything. Why am I not getting these features? You get what I'm saying? And then we shot the scenario video. And it took two years to come out. So now I'm just like, it got to the point. So then, I'm, I'm going to speed you up. I think we had a conversation before college ain't for everybody. And I told you, bro, we ain't ready. Do you remember that? Yeah. And you said, well, in so many words, it's too late now. You feel what I'm saying? Because you already started the promotion. And I'm trying to tell you, bro, we not ready. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, maybe... I'm not even gonna say maybe, I'm gonna say I should. I should have communicated with you more like, bro, I'm going through what I'm going through over here. I'm, I'm really entering a depression. You feel what I'm saying? But I'm trying to be strong because I know how much we, you, but we invested into this. I gotta keep pushing, but I don't want to. You feel what I'm saying? So we get there, college ain't for everybody uh, come out. We had the, uh, the best fucking release party. Everybody that love just pulled up. You feel what I'm saying? And I feel like after that, it came down to them negotiations, right? right? And I can admit, I avoided it because I wasn't there, bro. Right. You get what I'm saying? Right. For whatever for whatever reason, the girly I was with or whatever, it just didn't work out. I wasn't at where I wanted to be at in life, bro. I I don't I ain't trying to do music right now. I can tell you once. You feel what I'm saying? You come at me again with the with the contra, you know, with the negotiations. I'm gonna tell you twice. At the third time, I don't know what else to tell you. We meet up at starters, and that's where I feel like it was just that was my official retirement. Mm -hmm. I gave you that conversation. I said, bro, I, what did I tell you? I mean, just just in short, that you that you had checked out, basically. Like, bro, I'm done. Right. Like I don't, I don't want my my verbatim. It was I don't want you to spend another dime on this Facts. shit. Don't spend not. A, I'm I'm done, bro. I don't have nothing else to give us. And that being being that and to where I'm at now, I appreciate that. And not only just that, where I'm at now, I respect you for that. I really do because when it's all said and done. Uh, and I've mentioned this to many people because, because you know, people always come with, you know, what's happening, what's going on, you know, this, that, uh, you know, that verdict ain't 17 no more. You're 30 years old, 29 years old or whatever. Um, but to that, to that, We won from day one. I agree. We won from day one. Um, that's easy to say. You know what I mean? That's easy. No, I definitely agree. Yeah. Because we came into this knowing that we wanted to be the best, but there's no guarantees. Right. Let's make the most of. We put ourselves in position to get it. Now, if you don't make the shot, you don't make the shot. Right. But we took every shot we had. And that's and again, that's what it's all about. For sure, whether it was us going to Atlanta, driving to Atlanta, whether it was flying out to Connecticut, whether it was going to Cali to perform Texas, with Richard, Texas, Chicago, whatever, we was California. there. We shot our shot. Right. Now, if you don't make the shot, you don't make it. But you will never make a shot that you don't take. But I like to think that it was done right from the beginning. And that's, and that's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of it. Again, what is it if you, what is it? How am, how am I trying to trying to word this? What is with an artist that is nowadays the most overlooked thing, but is the most especially for an artist that's stylistically you? 
What is it that an artist must have? Passion. Of course you gotta have passion. Respect? Nope. I'm guessed out, bro. Development. <laughs> For sure. Development. Development is what's is what has kept us in the game. You can, you can development. You, development is what allows me to be able to write for other people. It, it, it allows not, me. It allows me to to make music for other people. It allows me to understand people because of development that I had. And also, that's fire. Development. That was fire. Development <laughs> facts, but development. <laughs> development allows you to be able to go beyond Paulie. And go with Crawford. Oh, he just Crawford. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you you might not want to say names, oh, but no, that's, that's definitely Crawford. I know where he doing it. Who you did? Who who did you did keep living with? QP. Hell of a hell of a right. And anyone else that can appreciate your cachet as artist. Period. You don't need Pauly. You get what I'm saying? So that is where, that is where, when it's all said and done, that if you will, Pauly has, but, huh? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Pauly has to. Even if for whatever reason that me and you have disagreements or whatever it is, the whole point going in was for Verdict to be the best Verdict. That just made me feel like a piece of shit. Go ahead. What, what, why? Go ahead. What, what, what? <laughs> God damn. Well, what you gotta understand is it shouldn't make you feel like a piece of shit because... It was a joke. It made me feel honored and, and loved. Yeah, because, because, because you're... You're at that time 17 years old. So you you have to come into you whether Paulie like it or not. And that's what I'm trying to say that I respect you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And no matter whomever feel however they feel about it. But you know the story ain't over it. Well, I wouldn't I wouldn't expect it to be. <laughs> <laughs> the story ain't over, my good brother. What are you doing over there, man? I don't know, but I definitely appreciate you for sitting down and kicking it with you, little bro. You raised a, a nice young man and myself, you know? I like to. To be continued, I'm, my I good like brother. I think I did. Right? Yeah. Been a fish ass. We six mile, but we gone. We from Detroit, so we gotta come on. You ain't wanna. <laughs> It's a wrap. Yeah. Back on the scene, crispy and clean. Beneficials on making hits for my team. Loyalty over all, nothing fits in between. Best nigga in the lead, I'm convinced that it's me. Return of the ugly, fuck all that British shit. Back to getting money, Detroit City shit.